was the best workout I've had in a long time. Seriously. There are uh, several factors in play when I'm picking a spot to uh, uh, watch and, and listen. After all, I'm going to be there all night. So I have a kind of a checklist that I go over in my head. Does it have a good vantage point? Am I able to remain hidden? Is it reasonably comfortable? Do I have room for my stuff? Is there a bathroom nearby? Does it have Wi-Fi? Do they accept major credit cards? What's their cancellation policy? I just heard what sounded like a wood knock, which is literally a knock on wood, which is what we call it in the field. It's like a technical term. It's a wood knock, a knock on wood, like something knocked on wood. And here's the thing. There are very few things in the wild that can knock on wood. I mean, I, I suppose, it, you know, it, it could be a, a, a wild cat chewing on a stick and another animal called it abruptly and it, it turned its head fast, not realizing how close it was to the tree and the stick knocked the tree, a wood knock. Or, or if we, we stretched things a bit, it, it could have been that, uh, let's say a raccoon placed a snake in a tree by mistake. I don't know why else it would do that. And the snake, in its confusion, dislodged a rock that a, uh, a bird had deposited there to reinforce a nest for its, uh, its nestlings. And, and now the dislodged stone plummeted, bouncing off a lower branch, making a knock sound. Or, and I know I'm reaching here, maybe a grazing deer dropped a piece of deer food from its mouth and when it, and when it bent down to pick it up, its antler hooked a squirrel who had a chestnut and when the deer raised its head suddenly again, it flung the squirrel and the chestnut flew from its tiny grasp knocking out a salmon that had been placed there by a bear, maybe for a snack later, and the salmon landed on a stick, leaning against a rock, snapping it against the tree, thus making a knocking sound. Or, contrary to popular belief in investigating the unknown, you do not have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on high-tech equipment. I find just as good, if not better, results using a curling iron, an air fryer, and a common household delinter. There used to be a uh, 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 stigma attached to investigating the paratypical and for a while there, whenever I would be interviewed, I would naturally ask for anim, 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 sorry, anonymity, and they offered to disguise my voice. But I happen to be one of those rare gifted people who can actually disguise their own voice. So I, I would go like, like a, a well, I don't want talking about this subject because I don't know what might happen to me if people find out. Unfortunately, everyone still knew it was me.